<laughs> Hello, boils and ghouls. It's your old pal, John Kassir, the voice of the Crypt Keeper. And guess what, kiddies? You are now tuned in to PVD Horror Podcast. Pleasant screams. <laughs> Hey, what's going on? You're now tuned in to the PVD Horror Podcast. I'm Brandon, and today I'm joined by producer, director, and writer Adam Newman to talk about his new film, Everwinter Night. Adam, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, no problem. So, Adam, you've been in the, um, been creating films for about, what, 15 years now? What inspired you to get into this line of work? Oh, boy. Uh, that's a good question. I guess if I really knew it, I'd probably probably think to get out of it. Um, I think as long as I've been around, I've wanted to tell stories, mm -hmm. um, you know, ever since I started reading and writing, I was writing stories and, uh, pl you know, playing video games and things like that kind of got me absorbed in them. And we always had the TV on and we always had movies going. So I think that was probably the beginning stages. And then it was kind of figuring out where my place was when I came to writing stories. And I started with the novels and whatnot. And in high school, I got into playwriting, and then eventually, I uh, I heard my playwriting. I overheard him talking about the movie Magnolia. And, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so I was like, "All right, well, let me give this movie a shot." And I put it on, and after watching it, I said, "I don't, I don't know what the hell I just watched, but uh, whatever <laughs> that was, I need to continue doing that." Yep. And so, ever since then, you know, I, I picked up a camera, and then I just started connecting with people, and you know, I I put in my time doing the seven or eight years of being really, really terrible at this. And then mm -hmm. hopefully since then we've, we've gotten a little bit better. Um, I still like to say that if I could do anything else, I absolutely would um, <laughs> because it's, it is driving <laughs> me insane, but uh, you know, it's the first thing that I think about when I wake up and it's the last thing I think about before I go to bed. And it's basically the only thing I want to do. I, my brain is very broken where every little thing that somebody brings up, I immediately try to turn into a story. So, um, I guess I may as well, well continue to pursue it. That's cool. So yeah, you talked, you touched on, uh, the plays and everything. I need to know about like the plays that you would put together with your friends and your family and at, over on your sleepovers and stuff like that how was that as a kid oh god yeah <laughs> you're digging you're digging it up um <laughs> i grew up in a really nice uh neighborhood uh in that we had a lot of kids that yeah. that hung around and uh, me and my sister we kind of called ourselves feral children where our parents would just kind of release us outside and we go running around and we ended up kind of picking up this whole crew and we were very lucky that uh, all of the boys that were in the neighborhood were about my age and all the girls were my sister's age, you know, two years younger. Uh, and so we're kind of in this bracket and we all started hanging out. And with my obsession with these stories and, and things like that, um, eventually we'd all have sleepovers. And the, the very unfortunate thing about me is I, I'm kind of a steamroller of a human and I kind of <laughs> force a lot of people to do these things. And <laughs> so back then I, I was forcing them to to be part of these plays. And a lot of times we would we would take the Final Fantasy soundtracks and we would play them while we were telling the stories. And at this time, I was really obsessed with fantasy and, and sci-fi stuff. And so that's kind of how it began. And so it's funny watching all of these people, all of these childhood friends of mine come back and, and watch the movies, you know, watch them on the big screen. Mm. And they all go, yeah, we knew this was coming. You know, there, were, <laughs> there was no way you could not do it. So. That's cool. That's what it's all about, man. You know, yeah. so just just having that dream for something and just, you know, get into whatever you 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 love, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, I noticed you had a post also that you put up 2023 was one of your best years. Uh, can you can you elaborate on that? Yeah, you know, I'm I'm lucky enough where the past it's I've been thinking the same thing over and over for the past maybe four years. Mm -hmm where every year has been the best year of my life leading up into that point, which, you know, I'm, I'm really blessed in it. And it comes, you know, both professionally and personally. And 2023, you know, we we finished up Everwinter Night, the movie that we're we're talking about a little bit today. And and we're in pre-production. We were started the pre-production process for our next movie, too. 
uh, Round the Decay, which we go into production in 16 days, which is a little bit oh, terrifying. Nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, it was just a lot of that. And uh, it, it's kind of cool because Dreamscape Productions got created then. I used to be part of a production company called But It Did Happen Productions. Okay. And it's kind of morphed into Dreamscape. And now it's starting to look like a lot of my professional life is going to be making movies, which is, you know, it's been the dream for the past 15 years. And those were the first steps we were taking for this to be a reality. And and now we're talking about making potentially two or even three movies a year, which, you know, is blowing my mind. And, you yeah. know, the very arrogant 18 year old version of me would say like, yeah, duh, this is exactly <laughs> what was supposed to happen. But uh, me now slightly less, slightly less of an egomaniac is going, I can't believe that I'm in this position. So yeah, 2023 was great. And, you know, we're only, you know, three months into 2024, but it's looking like it's already going to be the best year ever. So there you go. That's the attitude to have, man. It's trying to like conquer whatever you have lined up. So, um, let's talk about dreamscape productions. It's uh based out of New Hampshire. Uh, how'd you get involved with this company? Yeah, so uh, it kind of got formed from uh, me and, and Sean Ward, who uh, mm. who owns the company, and he'd been talking about it for years. I met him. I apologize to anybody who's going to listen to this, who's heard this story a thousand times, because I, mm. I do tell it often. But uh, I was looking for a free location for uh, for a dystopian uh, fantasy story that we wanted to tell, and we needed a we needed a barn location where we could build a set within, and and so I reached out to a whole bunch of them, like I do in all these films, you know, just casting out all of my, my lines to see if anybody bites. And, and Sean did, I, I, I reached out about, he was running a place called Gould farm at the time. And he owned a place called Pierce farm in Topsfield mass. And I said, Hey, you know, we don't have any money, but we're really hoping to shoot this thing. And, and he responded by, by sending his headshot and said, uh, if you put me in the movie, you got yourself a location. And so that was probably seven or eight years ago. And Okay. And now, uh, now Sean, you know, it was great. We were finishing up every winter and I had put, you know, $20,000 in myself and my buddy had put in $20,000 and we knew that we had to come back for another few days to shoot the movie. And, uh, and Sean jumped in and he said, Hey, I I'd like this to be the first feature from dreamscape productions. Wow. Okay. So all of a sudden it was born and it was great because we didn't have to dip into our savings and go bankrupt. So <laughs> it was, it was great for that to happen. And then since then we've, uh, we've brought in Topher Hansen who, uh, who works as he's going to be the post guy for, uh, for our next movie. And okay. he, he did the coloring for, uh, for Everwinter. He's also an actor. He was, he was in Everwinter as well. So we've got a little team there and then we want to continue to work with the people that, uh, that we've been working with, you know, a lot of the actors and a lot of the the crew that we've we've worked with, and we're working with them on our next project. And then, you know, those others that we weren't able to work with on this next project, we're going to work with them on the next one. You know, so we're we're really building something, or so we think. Nice. Yeah. Now, like you said, Everwinter Night is the first feature from Dreamscape Productions. Uh, can you give the listeners a synopsis of the film? Oh yeah, sure. So it's um it's about these two best friends from childhood, Maddie and V. And they're getting back together to have uh, kind of like a girls weekend, a reconnecting type of thing, because, you know, they both went away to college and they're just starting to distance themselves a little bit. And they're trying to kind of rekindle that friendship. And uh, when they meet up at this diner, uh, Maddie's friends show up and kind of end up hijacking the weekend. They've just met these rich gentlemen who are like, hey, come up to our ski lodge. We'll pamper you guys for the weekend and it'll be great. And Maddie's in and V is very not interested in it. And so they go up and each of the nights over this long weekend, something a little bit more sinister starts to build until it kind of turns into chaos. Ace. Now, I um, had seen that there was some big news that you guys had posted that the film is also now available on Tubi. Um, it's also available on Amazon Prime to rent for $1.99. Um, so definitely, you know, for, for the listeners out there, rent this film to help support everyone that was involved in this project. And, you know, there's also, um, you can purchase the film for $4.99. Uh, so yeah, definitely. So how was, how was the whole, uh, setup to get the film on Tubi? What was that like? I mean, it's obviously great, you know, the yeah. fact that it just happened. Um, so we went through and we're, we're self-distributing and so we're using film hub and we're very happy with it so far. And, mm. you know, we 
play star movie on there we had talked with a, a distributor and we had talked with a sales agent and we just didn't really want to go that route for this movie yeah. uh, especially we can kind of figure out what our marketing plan is going to be going forward and kind of learning what our distribution path is going to be and so we put it up on film hub and we got all of our deliverables and then you know sat there and waited and and then all of a sudden amazon scooped us up and that was really exciting and the, the tough thing of course when it comes to distribution is you never really know when when it's going to be live and so yeah. every day you're checking to see if you're up <laughs> and so prime was great that was huge and we think that the price is great you know at yeah. two dollars for a rental and, and five dollars to own it you know that obviously supports us it gives us a chunk of a little chunk of that money yeah. but what we care most about is is people watching it you know so however you want to go about watching it is great by us and and then Tubi is is such a great great opportunity because it's free you know it's yeah. free we still get we get some of the ad revenue which is awesome uh we got picked up by Tubi 20 23 days ago or something like that and okay. we were we were waiting around and then finally it popped it took us 22 days and we know that some other people are dealing with seven month wait times and yeah. so you know we were kind of expecting something like that but it got up there and now we have you know, two big methods of, of getting this movie out there. You know, Prime is is a great way, especially for people who know us, to rent yeah. the movie. Tubi is such a it's such a great streaming service right now for people yeah. that are just looking to find something. And if you just see the poster that you like, you go, you know what? Hell, why not? I'll I'll throw it on and and hopefully that works for some people. And we're lucky enough that it's already been hitting with some people. And we've seen a couple of reviews now and a couple of posts on on Twitter and whatnot. We're or somebody people are really enjoying it and they're pushing it which is you know it's it's one of the more exciting things because that's all we really make these things for right it's it's nice to make some money off them but it's even better when people get to watch them exactly and like i said you know uh it's 4.99 to buy on amazon prime uh, i appreciate you guys sending the link out but i just had to go purchase it to help you guys you know Very to you Thank know you. help and support it's all about that's what it's all about the horror community is about <laughs> uh you. you know supporting everyone and, and kind of getting their dreams to come true so sure. thank you so much um like you said the with the poster work and everything just that pops out uh that that was definitely something that stood out to me uh do you, how was the who created the uh poster art for the for the film i just gotta say thank you so much for saying this because um one of we actually the distributor that we had spoken to uh turned us down because of our poster okay. and which we were very surprised about because it's the poster's awesome and yeah. uh this is my third interview today and every single one of you guys has said the same thing which yep. is you know, it's a great poster it is and it's by uh sadis arts and uh mark Sconebeck, i believe is his last name i don't know exactly how to pronounce it but he's like a legend in this field. He creates so many great posters. And what's so great about it, him is we sent this, we sent this over to him and uh, we sent the movie over to him and, and he watched it and he went through and he came back. He said, you know, this is kind of what I'm thinking. And we had sent him a couple reference images and whatnot, but he took it and went in such a better direction than we were even considering. And we just gave him some minor notes, tweaks and two drafts later, it's, it is what it is. And, I think it really falls in line with what the movie is and it kind yeah. of gives the feeling that you, of the lodge that you're there and it's a little bit classy and I love that it's there's very little color and it really makes the red pop so I think it's awesome and the great news is that the horror community have been the ones that have been like dude this poster rules I'm in yeah. from the poster alone so you know it's a it's a great feeling and shout out to to Mark for for pulling it off yeah it definitely gives that like throwback horror film style you know you just you can't help but love it you know so uh yeah that that's great that's great to hear like a little backstory to that mm. so the film won best drama feature at the central florida film festival were you able to attend that event if so how was your experience there yeah uh it's crazy that it won for drama which is yeah. when we started we started piecing together that oh man this this movie does really mm. uh it's a lot of genres kind of smashed into yeah. one, you know? And so, um, yes, we were able to attend. So it was great. We had, uh, boy, I think it was six representatives there. Mm -hmm. uh, luckily, we also had one of our shorts playing there, too. So it was kind of cool that we got to see our short, which is very different. It's a sci-fi romance uh, action movie. So okay. it's cool to have those two different experiences. Um, going to see it again with an audience and an audience that you don't know is incredibly exciting it was great you know the theater was nearly packed and afterwards we got to talk to people we got to sell some of the merchandise um 
obviously it's cool to win an award. It's really exciting, but it nothing is quite as exciting as when somebody comes running up to you afterwards and, and says, oh my God, that movie was awesome. Or they ask you a question about it and then you tell them about the budget and they go, wow, that is, that is a lot. You guys got a lot out of that budget. Or yeah. we tell them the story of how the movie got made and they go, oh my God, I can't believe that the movie's <laughs> coherent. So yeah, no, it was a really cool experience. And also being from the Northeast, it was great to go to Florida in January. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we didn't have to deal with the with the snow and whatnot. So yeah, no, it was a really it was a really special event. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, you just touched on uh how the story of creating the film was so crazy. So um can you tell us about that? Because I know there was uh, you know, unforeseen complications that that happened. You know, can you can you talk about that? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um it's certainly not the way you should make a movie, but mm -hmm. uh we were kind of forced into it. Uh our we never wanted to make Everwinter Night as it is. That wasn't our intention. We were, were supposed to make uh, a very quiet family drama uh, mm -hmm. that had the same name, Everwinter Night. And what ended up happening was it was right at the end of, of the COVID guidelines by SAG. And we were trying desperately to meet these guidelines and we're having a very hard time. And we kept coming back and saying, will this work? Will this work? And it became pretty clear that in order to meet their guidelines, we were going to have to potentially put another ten or twenty thousand dollars into the movie and it just wasn't something that we had laying around unfortunately so the day before we were basically shut down and so we had to kind of come together and say all right so we can quit right now and you know call it a loss for the few thousand dollars that we've already put into the movie or we can try to make something completely new and uh you know put our heads together and see what we come up with and so I had this old idea that I had been playing with, um, which is Forever Winter Night, which was very much based off of the relationship between my sister and I. And I, we kind of took that and everybody showed up on a Saturday. And what we started doing was we crafted the story and we boarded it over that Saturday. And then Chris Goodwin, uh, the co-writer, and he's also in the movie as well. Uh, we started writing it the next day and probably got 40 or 50 pages done. Uh, he wrote forwards and I wrote backwards and <laughs> we, um, we were able to get that 40 or 50 pages. And then we showed up on Monday to start filming and we just went with it. And then after our 12 hour shoot days, Chris would start writing and then I go to bed for two or three hours and then I would wake up and I'd start writing. And then we tried to piecemeal this thing together and we were, it's not how you should make a movie. I think it's a very silly idea. And obviously we went in a completely different direction. We went, yeah. you know, we decided to do this kind of comedy, kind of horror, kind of drama, um, just based off of that, that idea I had. And the actors had to trust us and we had to trust them. And if the movie makes sense at all, it's, it's clearly a miracle. So yeah, um, I would tell nobody to ever do this ever, but it was a cool creative exercise, certainly where, you start to figure out what you can do with a limited mm -hmm. amount of time and a limited amount of resources and and using what you have you know at your disposal and so yeah that's kind of the the story of how it got made i hope that the movie speaks for itself and that that's that story isn't and it doesn't end up being the big thing about it but it is a cool little wrinkle you know yeah that's i have to say that's impressive you know what i mean because it, it sucks you know whenever you're putting something together and it just falls apart and you're just like mm -hmm. oh man but that shows you know that your experience, you know, like 15 years in this, mm. you know, to get something done like that, just to piece everything together and also bring the team together and just, you know, say, Hey, we're going to, we're going to do this. And you guys did that in like 12 hours, you know, just <laughs> locked in, you know, for a 12 hour shoot. That that was crazy. Um, it's, it, but it's cool to see that you were able to pull that off. And I, um, I have to say the cast and crew did a great job. What was it like working with everyone? You know, it's great. Uh, I'm so lucky to be in the position that I'm in. And most of these people are people that I've worked with so many, so many years, you know, mm. Chris, who I wrote the movie with, and he, to be fair, he wrote way more than I did. I was, I was busy directing. I remember I asked him one time, I said, Hey, you remember this moment on, and he goes, no, I was writing. I'm like, Oh yeah, that's right. I was, <laughs> I was directing. So I've worked with Chris for years. Uh, Victoria who plays V in the movie. Um, we very creatively named her V. Um, she's, she's great as the lead. And we had worked with her several times, Jamie, who plays Jack. I've worked with him for seven years. And then a lot of these other people were people that we'd almost worked with in the past, you know, like Nicolette and, and Alana, and then, uh, McKenna who plays Maddie. A lot of these people are people we had, 
we have known. And then uh, the character who plays Dom, uh, this actor named Love, uh, I've worked with them for 15 years. They were my first movie ever. So we were lucky that we had this rapport with them already, which was great. But then, you know, it was our first time working with our DP and we're really excited to be working on our next project with him. And and so it was a, it was a mixed bag, certainly. And, and what was crazy is, you know, we're writing characters for people we know and we're lucky. But then some of these people we got to know over that course of that first weekend and we went, all right, well, I think a character like this would work for them, you know, mm -hmm. so. Um, I still think my guess is right now I'm actually still on set and this is all a fever dream and I just <laughs> dreamed and dreamt of getting out of it. But but no, it was it was the most stressful experience of my life. But um, one of the great things was that every now and then you would accidentally hear the cast talking about it and they'd be like, I think we're making something special. I think we're really doing something really cool. And that's the type of thing that that gets you to get up again and continue. Yeah writing and yeah so overall it was a great experience but i always like to say that it's always better to have filmed than to be filming so there we go <laughs> that's cool so the film yeah there's a lot of cool twists and the uh the film is full of great kills you were able to craft a personal story that mixes a lot of what you love in horror uh with this project can you talk about that yeah. Um, so everybody keeps telling us it's a slow burn. And so yeah. and they keep saying that about all of our movies. So mm. it's starting to be our thing, which, you know, it is what it is. And I, that's what I like. I like slow burn cinema. It's true. Yeah. Um, it, it's really cool that we were able to combine a bunch of the things that we love and that um, that we're good at. You know, so Chris is a really good writer, especially of banter. He's really good when it comes to that. Um, but I was also able, we, I was able to get the stuff in that I like, which, yeah, I do like horror, you know, um, yeah. I'm, I'm a fair, I'm newer to the, to the genre, probably the last five years. Cause I was such a coward as a kid. Um, <laughs> but I'm not finally catching up on a lot of this stuff and I really enjoy it. And I, I really do enjoy a good kill. So, um, we tried to mix both of those things together. And, and the thing that I always cared the most about in any movie, it doesn't matter if it's horror or drama or action it's it's never really about what's happening it's about who it's happening to and okay. so i care about characters the most and i was able to find you know the victoria the v and, and maddie our relationship like i mentioned is is a lot it's about me and my sister and it's about mm -hmm. my fear of now that my sister is has a child and is married and lives further away from me you know it's the fear of losing that friendship and that's really the heart of the movie and so if you can find the heart of that movie and hopefully people can can empathize with that and then you can also have a monster it's 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 tough to beat that you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah i'm a big fan of uh slow burn films when it's done right and this film was definitely done right you know the, so the, the ending is a it's a great payoff uh yeah so i, I can't even praise this film like yeah, you know I mean even more because you guys just did a great job, and I, I just want everybody to definitely check this film out. I think that you're definitely going to appreciate it. Um, so, can you share any info of any upcoming projects, and can you tell listeners where they can find you on social media? Yeah, absolutely. For, and for thank you so much for for those um, kind words. That no does, problem. That means, yeah, that means a lot. And um, like I mentioned, there was just a couple people on Twitter that have been giving somebody just like went out of their way to praise the movie and then has gone out of their way to continue to push it forward and tell people to see it. Yeah. And I like to think that we make a movie just for one person every time, if we get one person to really be a part of it. And that guy right there, I went, this movie's worth it. You know, and yeah. it's, it's amazing when people come forward. It's, it, you know, I'm not an emotional human being. I'm a, I'm emotionless husk as I say, but, but it is, uh, it does get you a little bit emotional. So thank you. Yeah. Um, the next project that we're working on is, is called round the decay mm -hmm. and it's, it's far more of a horror, I would say than, than ever winter night is, uh, it's still very character driven. Um, but yeah, we're, we're 16 days away from filming, um, which is terrifying as always. Uh, it's the <laughs> biggest budget project that we've, we've ever had. Um, but we're, we're very excited about it. We have a lot of actors coming back. Um, uh, we also are working with a bunch of new people, some people that, have uh you know a little bit of sway and a little bit of face you know we have roger clark from red dead redemption and okay. got melody k from camp nowhere one of my favorite childhood movies and, <laughs> and we were able to pull a couple of those people in which is really cool and then our our makeup our special effects guy who's working on the monster for this monster movie is um his name's greg mcdougall and he's done he did stranger things and uh you know he showed me a 
picture the other day of being on set of Dr. Sleep, uh, which was really cool. So yeah, yeah we're, we're really, really excited about, about that coming up. And, uh, and yeah, if you want to keep up to date with us, you know, Dreamscape Productions, LLC on both Facebook and Instagram, I'm director Adam Newman on Instagram. Um, I'm also on Facebook, but it's tough to find me because Adam Newman's a very common name. Yeah. And then, um, and then round the decay it's round around underscore the underscore decay that's for the new movie and we do also have uh everwinter night on there as well so lots of places where you can keep up to date with what we're what we're doing and you know our goal was to shoot round the decay in april and premiere it in october and then in one year's time i'll be sitting across from you again talking about that movie so uh definitely man. i can't wait to check that one out because okay. i had seen some of the pictures and everything like for the monster uh some of the stills uh man it looks great so well, thank you yeah like some of the uh the monster that you guys have set up you know so i i, mm -hmm. I can't wait to see what you know what a what a normal timeline you know set up <laughs> for you is going to look like because you guys you guys you killed it with this one you know okay. so it's like all right and i can only just envision like something like like even crazier when it's like intended to be a horror movie with all this laid out so <laughs> sure that's cool. I can't wait for you guys. And congratulations on all the success for this film. You. you guys deserve it. Um, Adam, thank you so much for coming on. And everyone listening, make sure that you keep your friends close and your enemies forever. Wherever Winter Night, available now to rent for only $1.99 or to purchase for $4.99 on Amazon. It's also on, on Tubi. You don't want to miss this. We'll be back next week with another episode. Until then, take it easy. Game over.